basically my biggest writing came when I was when I got saved. Yeah. Got into the church. Now, at the time, you get married again, don't you? In the early eighties. Yes. Okay. And then you both you and your husband more or less make a transformation. Become I, I was reading your bio before yeah. you came on yeah. Christians. And, right. Uh, and you explained, of course, early on how that happened. But that was a, a pretty, must have been a pretty big drop. I don't know. Tell me, if uh, commercially speaking, in terms of um, you couldn't play discos anymore, yeah. and you, you, you couldn't do the pop scene anymore, how did you survive? I, I did a lot of, I just really had to, it had to come from my heart. It was something that um, I never want to do it again. It was the, the, the hardest time in my whole life. That was one of the worst transitions I've ever had, but it was the best. And uh, anything that's worth having is worth waiting on and worth praying about and worth sitting there and you know letting God do, do for you. See, what it is about um, Christianity and, and, and a relationship with the Lord is that it's not, not something that you do overnight. He's basically uh, in, more involved with the person than he is with the talent. So what he was doing was making me inside. He was taking a lot of things like the alcohol and things that I couldn't deal with. He was taking out my weaknesses and putting in his strengths. And that takes time. It took a lot of uh, discipline on my part. It took a lot of praying. It took a lot of fasting. It took a lot of reading the Word of God and uh, just staying there in that position until it was time to move. And when it was time to move, he moved. I mean, he moved in such a way. It was a year, I went on a year. There were six months when I didn't do anything. It was miraculous how God dealt with me in those six months. Um, I, didn't, I didn't sing or anything. I just sat there at the house and wrote songs. So it was like a, a, a self-purification process. Where it were you was living? In Birmingham, Alabama. Uh -huh. That time. But how did you how did you survive? <coughs> excuse me, financially. I mean, you were you could have gone out on a chitlin circuit any other time to make money or to make a record. <coughs> I'm sure that wasn't available to you anymore after you made that commitment, or was it? Yes, it was. it was. I turned down so many gigs during that time. People would call me; they still had my number, and it was like the greatest temptation. You know, like sure. here we are, could barely make rent, or could barely buy food in the house. And here's somebody calling me, offering me five thousand right. dollars right. just for thirty minutes. And, you and, I, and I said, I can't do it. I can't do it. And it's like, are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you? Are you crazy? But it was not that. It was something I had in my heart. I had to, I had to be true to me. I had to tr be true to myself. And the commitment that I had made to the Lord. And I says, no, but that was a dispensation. That was a season for me. That was a purification time for me. That was a time of, uh, of me knowing myself, knowing who I was. I'd known all this time I didn't know who I was. I had no value in myself. That's why I kept making wrong mistakes, you know, just picking wrong people. Because I didn't love me. I, had, I didn't even know who I was. And uh, that kept me, and, it, and I began to, to, to learn more and more about me by knowing who God is, and the verses were coming alive in my spirit, and um, the Lord was giving me beautiful, beautiful songs, and it was really enjoyable doing that.